PRS is one big custom shop. The same people who made this guitar for me are making the guitar for you. I wanted the guitar to have the warmth that exists inside of 50 year old guitars without having to wait 50 years or spend 15 grand. I think it's a benefit to the Silver Sky that I've owned so many vintage guitars in my life because I felt them, I've heard the differences. And to me, my ear goes to a slightly warmer tone on the guitar. This guitar doesn't have any of that harsh top end. And it kind of replicates an old pickup where the magnets on a 50 year old pickup would have warmed up, weakened just a little bit so that the top end is gone. Well, we made a pickup that does that from start. And that's exciting to me is to pick a guitar that has that warm, you know. There's no shiny, I just don't like the shiny stuff, you know. Also, I had no idea what I was gonna play. No idea what I was gonna play when I just put my hands on it. I just don't know. Feel-wise, even when a guitar has a 25 and a half inch scale, they're all different. You put five together in a row and pick one up, you're gonna find your favorite one, right? What makes your choice of favorite guitar out of five of the exact same guitars. I think, if I'm guessing correctly, it's something to do with the slack in the strings. That to me is what a guitar is. 90% of a guitar to me is the string. I play the string. The guitar is underneath that. I'm playing the string. And if you can get the string right, meaning you hang that thing from point to point, and that thing comes back when you want it to, and that thing goes When you want to do these real slight, slight little pushes and pulls, because I'm playing purposefully out of tune all of the time. So I'm not playing perfect semitone bands. I'm And same gauge strings, same scale length, same specs in every way can make five completely different guitars, and you'll find the one that does that the way you want it to. Well, Paul Reed Smith is a genius and he figured out how to make all five out of five feel like the one that has what I call the buttery feel. We all have these weird names we use for things. When something's buttery. Paul and I are crazy in different ways. He's crazy on a build end and I'm crazy on a feel end. And when we finally nailed it, it was like, I could land in any city that has a guitar center in it, walk in, I mean, I'm gonna have to buy it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to borrow it. Take it to wherever I need to be and it's like the guitar that came out of my living room. I'm just like everyone else. I'm a fan of the Stratocaster, huge fan of the Stratocaster. For years, I've been interested in tweaking it, moving it forward. Uh, modernizing it a little bit. And so that part is the icing on the cake for me. We're able to tell the story in a more modern way design-wise. You know, I mean, I've looked at the pick guard for so long on the Silver Sky that it looks right to me now. And the headstock took me a minute. You know, I saw it a year before anyone else saw it. And I went, huh? And as I kept playing it and looking at it, I went, oh no, I, I see how that's a thing. And I feel like people are beginning to understand it visually, it takes a minute. It's three on a side for a couple of reasons, but the main reason is because it's the spirit of Paul's 35 years of designing these guitars that it has a, a real strong PRS design element to it. Also the law, the law, big, big component in all design. You know what I mean? <laughs> the law, but um, when you talk about these classic looks of guitars, if you look at what materials and designs were available in the 1950s and 60s, well, they're still being used all the time only for guitars. So things that are sunburst, things that are mother of pearl or mother of toilet seat or celluloid looking, or, you know, these are all a bygone era. And I wanted to really move the guitar away from this classic and, and wonderful time period, but move it more into this modern period of Tesla Apple, Leica, these really clean designs. And the first four colors of the Silver Sky are Tesla colors. 
I like pulling colors from modern references. I am a three out of five guy for the last 30 years of my life, which means I like the neck, the neck middle, and I like the middle bridge. Um, just messing around. That's what everyone says, just messing around. Um, so those are there, right? So I've always thought those three. And I always looked at the other two, the middle and the bridge, as being these kind of basic, boring, chore-like settings. And then Paul kind of convinced me that we could get what I wanted out of the middle, which, do I speak for all guitar players when it comes to five ways that we kind of, kind of jump over the middle? I remember being a kid and setting the graphic EQ in like, my mom's car to a V. I don't know why, I always heard the mids is very kind of non-musical, very scientific sounding, you know? And so we really had to go through and get the voicing of them correct so that I got my sound, which is. <laughs> have just enough low end, have enough high end to cut, but none of, none of the really ultra high end. It's the ultra high end that my ears get tired of. It, it's what makes me put a guitar down, you know? But on these, the middle has a ton of character to it. And it's actually really fun to play BB King stuff on the middle and the, and the bridge, you know? You know, I would use the middle for really wide open. And then the bridge pickup, it's really, really fun. I, I would use it, I'd go to that stuff, you know? The other thing I want to show you is that the tone knobs on this guitar, to me, are sort of mastering grade tone knobs. A lot of times you get a guitar and the tone knob might as well just be like a three-way switch, which would be all the way open, medium, and all the way muffled. But these, you know, if I go on, you can, all the way, it's a perfect uh, slope. They're there for a reason now to me. So if I'm wide open. I like it right around there. The Silver Sky turns this into a real instrument panel now, where you can sit with a guitar and know, it, it's sort of this one big atmosphere in front of you. And this feels right, and the frets are dead level, and the tuners are locked in to place, and you have everything at your disposal, and no matter where you are in a song, or where you are in a jam, or where you are just creating in your room, this is sort of like a gear shift. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
The sign of a great guitar is falling into what I call the feedback loop of joy and sound, and joy and sound. And you can throw feel in there too. So when it feels good and it sounds good, then you get this feeling of joy. And then you play with more feel. And then it sounds better and it feels better and you keep going. This is what keeps the guitar in your hands. If a guitar can do that, that's a special guitar. And I can do it on this guitar all day. I can go like, I kind of like that, gotta be honest with you. Didn't know I could do that. I'm a very informed bullshitter on the guitar. That's really what we are. We're, we are very, very well-educated bullshitters on the guitar. Hey, going for this. And the great thing about music is you don't break your neck if you go for a jump. Then you practice it again and again and again and again and again. Like for the last five years, I've been working on this one lick that I still only get right half the time. And I'm using it on the, I guess I just feel like, a new single available now, doesn't matter. I can actually show you. <laughs> finally done it on a personal level, we've achieved success. You'll be feeling exactly what it is I love out of a guitar. It's warmth and it's smoothness and it's the ability to take six straight lines and make them sound like curves and arcs and circles and figure eights. That takes a lot of magic. Paul Reed Smith figured out a way to codify that magic and reproduce it for people to play wherever they want to. Anybody can grab it now. I don't know. That's what I would play in the music store real loud.